I'm just going to run through some of the new modeling changes in Cinema 4D version 15. So the first change is um, Hypernerbs is now called Subdivision Surfaces because uh, basically this is the industry standard word. Also, uh, you'll notice that the word NERBS has been removed from the end of these operations here. So Extrude NERBS is now just simply called Extrude. Um, a great addition to the modeling tools is the bevel tool. And the bevel tool has been completely rewritten. So I'm just going to select this cube and convert it to an editable object like this. And I'm going to go into line mode. And I'm just going to select all the edges. So I'm just going to turn off only select visible elements. So it's uh, selecting the back faces as well. So that's all the edges selected. Now I'm going to right click and go to bevel. And you'll notice now we've got these control handles. Whoops. I've enabled snapping. So I'm just going to turn that off. So if I pull on this uh, control handle, I can basically adjust the amount of bevel. And you'll notice the slider uh, reacting over here. And once I'm happy with my bevel, I can add some further subdivisions, like this, which is really cool. And um, I can also uh, define the curvature of this bevel using a curve. But to better illustrate this, I'm going to go over to my wall object here. So this is my wall object, which I created quickly. Uh, it's just like a simple corner section. And I'm going to select these two edges here. And I'm going to right click and go to bevel. And I'm just going to pull my bevel out slightly to get a corner. So basically, it's instead of going with the default option here, which is uh, a really good rounding, basically, you can choose your own um, custom curvature. If you go to user, and then we can basically edit this curve and define this cross section like that and if you hold down control and click you can add another point here but uh, obviously now I need more subdivisions so I'm just going to increase those and now we can see the curve and I'm just going to scale this up now you'll notice that um, this can go beyond the limits. So if you don't want it to do this, you can basically select a limit here. And then that way it can only uh, go so far. It can't go beyond the edges, which is quite useful as well. And we can even define a spline for, for this profile here. So if you go to profile and I'm just gonna create a quick spline in the front view here. I'll just do something freehand like that. So because I accidentally clicked away, basically the bevel operation is now committed. It's basically destructive, so once you um, once you kind of click away or hit OK, that's it. And you have to undo to go back, which can be quite frustrating. So I'm just going to select those edges again. They're already selected. and. I'm going to right click bevel and I'm just going to give it some bevel like that. Where it said round originally, I'm going to change this to profile and then drag and drop my spline into that profile. And now we're basically using this spline as the profile shape. You can see it there. And because I've got limit selected, it doesn't go beyond the limits of the edges. So this can be very useful for uh, interior design, uh, architectural projects. Lastly, I'm just going to delete these here. And I'm just going to make my plane object visible. Hit H to center the object in the viewport. And I'm just going to select some edges in the middle here. So this one, something like... something like that and I'm going to right click go to bevel and I'm just going to pull it out reduce the subdivision slightly so with zero subdivisions the this is the shape we get 
it's kind of a very sharp kind of mitering. But uh, we can actually even define how these edges, how these corner points kind of behave. So if I go to mitering and set it to uniform, now we've got this kind of uh, sharp corner and it's using four-sided polygons as well. So we basically have some really good control over the topology of things. And we've also got radial, which uh, splits it into two triangles. Again, quite handy. And it's using four-sided polygons again, no n-gons there. And then finally, patch. And uh, patch basically strictly follows the original shape. And then the, uh, the corners kind of conform to that original shape which was set. So some very useful tools here. And I think that's enough for part one, but in part two, I'll go through these further options as well. But uh, in case you want to find out how anything works, you just simply have to right click and go to show help. And then you get some very uh, detailed help in Cinema 4D with diagrams and it pretty much explains everything really well.